Uh, we're joined now by the coordinator of the Job Monitoring Group, Joseph Eva. Uh, good morning and thanks uh, for joining us on TVC Breakfast this morning. Um, Chief Eva, well, we also uh, have uh, joining us from Port Harcourt, uh, Bristol Alagbaria. He is the Secretary General of the Ijo Youth uh, Council. Uh, good morning to you also and thanks for joining us. Okay, let's uh, begin with you, um, uh, Chief, uh, right here in the studio. Um, yes, the, the questions we've been asking, you know, who exactly uh, should we blame for the situation in the Niger Delta where you now have, you know, uh, a resurgence of militancy. Now we have the NDA, Niger Delta Avengers, on our hands. One would have thought amnesty would have solved that problem. Well, if I go into that... <coughs> Uh, I'm ordinary comrade, uh, not chief. I'm okay, not, comrade. I'm not, <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm not yet uh, a chief. Um, before going further, mm. I want to honor our Niger Delta sons, South South sons, sport giants. Uh, I want to observe a minute, uh, silent for Keshi and uh, Swadi Am Amadu, uh, the coach and uh, the captain of Super Eagles. They are from the Niger Delta. Uh, we pay respect to them. They are great talent. That is to tell you that the South South will produce a lot of talent. So we are not all just about violent, violent, and all violent. We are great people. And for the morning period of our two great sons, uh, Stephen Keshi mm. and also uh, Amadu, uh, Amadu, uh, Amadu uh, Edu and Delta State. Uh, South South children. I mean, right. sons. We are proud of them. Okay, indeed. I know having, I said that, too. Mm. having said that, having um, said that, the government, the federal government, the state government are to blame. We are talking about Keshi. We are talking about uh, Amon. We are talking about building talent. The government is not interested in anything development in that region. All what they are interested in, just lay pipe to loot the environment. And so whatever cosmetic thing they are doing, we are telling them that. The, the longer you continue to use these cosmetic ideas and all that, you are wasting your time. You are creating problems. We will come back to square one. If you are doing things genuinely, you will see the reflection. You will see in those days when Gowan established or introduced the National Sport Festival, the Midwest through our leader, Ogbomdia. Ogbomdia was training young people, sportmen and women, Edo State, I mean, uh, Old Bendel and the Midwest, leading in sports matter. Even as we speak, any national sport festival, you see that the South South people are leading every national sport festival. So we have brains everywhere. If we can produce among women, beautiful women like you, but we, the South South people, were able to produce the first woman vice chancellor first professor of mathematics so mm. you can imagine the government is not interested because the oil companies will just tell them what we're interested in is just to loot and if they make noise in these communities will you send us your soldiers we deal with them now the backfire is what we're everywhere if we can produce among women beautiful women like you but we the south south people were able to produce the first woman vice chancellor first professor of mathematics so mm. you can imagine the government is not interested because the oil companies will just tell them what we're interested in is just to loot. And if they make noise in these communities, will you send us your soldiers? We we'll deal with them. Now, the backfire is what we have. Seen. Comrade, when you say this um, moves, ideas are cosmetic, are you saying the NDDC is, is cosmetic? Um, amnesty program, is that cosmetic? And all the other intervention programs that government has put in place to better the lives of the, you know uh, people in the niger delta the, the end of these things are mm. the results we are talking about mm. when we say cosmetic we cannot clap hand for federal government when federal government is winning ndc over 500 billion naira. we cannot we cannot be clapping hand for amnesty program when youths that you train they are doing nothing no job nothing and we cannot to shout day and night where are the things to engage these people the governors and the federal government cannot create empowerment even within Nigeria here, yeah, we can see what some private people are doing in terms of empowerment. So if you train people and you give the people stipend, 
after the stipend, you cannot engage them positively. Even with sport alone, South South can be ambassadors for Nigeria. Mr. South Eva. South can be ambassadors as far as Africa is concerned. Mr. Eva, I've listened to you several times. We've had you on this on, on this program a couple of times. Yes. And the explanation and analogy we, we keep giving or you keep giving is like a vicious circle, really. It goes that way and we end back at a particular point. Yeah, so is the government listening? Okay, so what, what can be done differently? Really? Now, we are saying emergency industrialization. We are saying we want all the South South governors to now provide 200 fishing trawlers, each of the states, and go into commercial fishing. You will see the empowerment. You will see things will change. The idle brains will be engaged. Why is it that the governors of Ninja Delta, the presidency, they don't have fishing trawlers in the Ninja Delta? All right. We are asking them. Why can't they have fishing trawlers? Just for the for the start, we want to see fishing trawlers line up the whole from a do state from on those state lining up down to a quiet bomb. We see fishing trawlers ready to go to the Atlantic Ocean to get their cars come into commercial uh, activities, engage either Indians and other people, then Nigerians, Niger Delta people working, youths are going into how to uh, uh, sell frozen chick, um, uh, catfish, prompts and other things. Why can't we? Look at Eleganza. Eleganza is a Yoruba man. He's now going to the Niger Delta to get uh, uh, petrochemicals. Petrochemicals, the byproduct of crude. Shell know that with the byproduct of crude, all these textiles we are putting on is available, is possible. Without byproduct of crude, we cannot have these things. 70% of the things inside this your area, inside this your studio, are from the byproduct of crude. Why is it that Shell is not going into commercial, even if it is not commercial fishing? Detergents, rubber. You go to supply area, you see rubber trees. They are sending them out of this country. Why can't we industrialize the Niger Delta every day? Talking, 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 talking. That okay, was why in those days, sorry, madam. Let's bring in, uh, sorry, uh, uh, Bristol Alagbaria. He's the Secretary General of the Jo Youth Council. Good morning to you again. Now, you've uh, listened, I, I believe, uh, to uh, Comrade Joseph Eva, and he's blaming government for not empowering uh, the people of the Niger Delta, and that is why we have what we have right now. Uh, he mentioned Eleganza. It did not take a government to, you know, uh, bring up an Eleganza and all the other people who have taken the initiative uh, to better their lives and thereby improving the lives of other people, becoming employers of labor. Um, for how long do you think, you know, uh, people of the Niger Delta will continue to, uh, you know, wait for this handout or blame government for the situation in the Niger Delta? Uh, okay, uh, well, I have uh, a different perception about that. Mm. Uh, they say business just as in life, that you don't get what you deserve, you only get what you bargain for, and uh, what you negotiate. I want to say that uh, in as much as we blame the government, the people of Niger Delta must also be held responsible, our leaders. Because over time, they have not been able to prioritize our needs, the challenges that we face. Though I know that uh, prior to this time, our founding fathers, the likes of uh, Aradapa Briye, Kensa Wiwa, even uh, uh, when the Rivers Chiefs and Elders went to Lancaster House to make a submission concerning the fears of the minorities. And uh, that led to the establishment of different intervention agencies. But we ask ourselves this uh, most pertinent question. These intervention agencies, what have they done till this time? Nothing. They've not done. Rather, corruption and every other personal interest have uh, derailed the focus of these founding fathers. Then from the government, concerning the uh, unrest in Niger Delta, the government, they have, due to the, the, the massive corruption in the system, you know, as, as a country, as a country, Nigeria, the amalgamation, uh, the way we came together, the forceful cohesion, uh, there is this greed and sentiment where there are three measures and every other ethnic nationalities are made to be uh, 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 co-opted under these three measures. By so doing, the Niger Delta people do not have that opportunity for them to express themselves. Look at our environment. The, Multinational, the land use decree. Hello? 
Yes, so well with you. you. Go ahead, please. The land use decree has so... Uh, uh, hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can. So enslave the Niger Delta people that, uh, for now, we do not have rights to the resources that are found within our environment. These are the lingering problems that has caused this uh, agitation in Niger Delta. Even when leaders like our own leader, Joseph Eva, I know that he has been at the forefront of this agitation, the likes of Ankyo Briggs and others, they have been agitating. But the government seems not to give attention to these challenges. They've rather been giving that hand out to the people. And if you talk about empowerment, I also do not subscribe so much. I believe that the government should empower the people mentally. Because providing trawlers and everything, if they're not mentally empowered, you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't build this, uh, you don't build high-rise buildings for the people, but you build the people so that they can develop the environment. All right. What we need is that our educational system must be enhanced so that it can compete with other world standards. Okay, Mr. Bristol. Uh, let's, uh, let's, let's have Mr. Eva react to so, some of those things that Mr. Br uh, Bristol just said. Yeah. One is the issue of corruption. And I'll take you back to your, your, your comment on, uh, uh, on the interventions of the government where Ngozi brought in the issue of NDDC. Yeah. There had been allegations that even projects that were paid for, even projects that were sponsored by the federal government for this, uh, some of these uh, uh, parastatals and agencies were not uh, saw through because uh, some of those money were uh, siphoned by the leaders in that particular region and of course uh, the issue of empowerment not just handouts to the people the government is still if government if people are embezzling the money from NDDC and government fold down who do we do? do you want the Niger Delta people to go to NDDC headquarters and start attacking people like what happened in Ogoni land that led to the killing of Kensarua it is not the people it is government is there government go and do your work if the people are, for example the oil companies are making profit why is it not Nigerians that are still working in the oil, oil companies? Why are the oil companies insisting that there will be no corruption in their system so that they smoothly loot the environment? Why can't they now employ that type of system into whether, whatever? But have whether you, it is have you ever pointed out any of your leader that yes. is found culpable in issues like this? Have you ever? We have carried out, in fact, in the Niger Delta, the petition that the Niger Delta people sent during Obasanjo government is more than any other government. Against, Why are many of our people facing trial? Those petitions against whom now? Is it it's against, against our the, own people. The, even, against local government, even local government councils. Mm -hmm. if local government councils are not doing anything. There are times we have to send, mobilize our Niger Delta children to Lagos mm -hmm. for conventions. 2011 convention, Professor Lily Williams was in my convention. For students, over 5,000 students were in Lagos. I brought Professor uh, J.P. Clark, the first professor of English, to my convention. Then we now move students to Yoruba areas to see what local government chairmen are doing in their own area. It is only in the Niger Delta that local government chairmen don't give scholarship. But in Yoruba land, we are seeing where local government chairmen are giving scholarship. So, so we now complain to government, deal with our local government chairmen. They will not. Mm. They will not. And we want the young people, when he was talking about training mentally, this and that, that is what we are doing. I organized my student convention because I believe that when we are following people like Ghani Faimi, when we are following people like Femi Fem Farano, to uh, student uh, uh, congresses in the University of Ibadan and all the other areas, we now know that the Yorubas, they train generations to take over from other generations. Mm -hmm. So if in this is our own uh, lifestyle now, if we don't train our, own, our younger ones who are in the universities, they will now come and become problem to their own children, children in the next... So what you're saying years. in effect is that this is a failure of leadership in the Niger Delta, the, not necessarily... There is no doubt about failure of leadership in the Niger Delta, but the government knows what to deal with. See, we have even asked this government to go to Liberia. In Liberia, there was serious civil war. After that, you don't hear of kidnapping. Because when you are empowering people, when you are creating empowerment, you are engaging the idle brain. Idle brain will be running away from violence. Idle brain will be running away from crime. It is happening in Liberia. Why is it that our own people, the moment the people now lay, organize, okay, agreement, agreement, after the agreement, government policies will now come in. Instead of you to appoint sincere people who are ready to work, you know very well. Look at what happened to the road safety. Is it not Wale Soinga that was sent by Bangida to go and establish the road safety? Mm -hmm. Are we not seeing results? Don't you know people who are genuine? And people who are not like Wale Soinga in establishing road safety? But Bangida government, if they are folding their hand in order to allow some people to do nonsense, the society, the press, the media, they help for trust type of people to be exposed. In our own situation, governors will now say security votes. 
with that security vote, nothing will come out engaging the idle brain. We expected the oil companies to protest to the federal government. Okay. What we are seeing, we are the people working in the creek. We are seeing that these people were giving this allocation of money. They are not doing anything to engage the idle brain. Therefore, we are not going to pay any money until the money we send to the governors and the federal government. They spend mm. the money on the people. All right, let's bring um, uh, Bristol uh, here. Before uh, we, we, no, I, I think we have like a couple of minutes before yes. we do that. Uh, Bristol to uh, uh, respond to allegations of, of course, uh, a political thuggery and the issue of. Uh, proliferation of arms in, in the region where uh, uh, politicians give arms to the uh, perhaps even retired militant but because there's they, they have arms now it, the, the, the trade seem a kind of attractive again do you want to respond to that so please can i get you i didn't get you clearly the issue of uh, political hello, thuggery you, uh, yes hello we are talking, we are asking the question who to blame and their accusations, really. And uh, perhaps we'll, we'll, we'll do that after uh, that. Right summit. after we return from this break from our viewers on entertainment, that's TVCE. Of course, you can continue to watch TVC Breakfast on TVC Nigeria on Concert Channel 190, BS TV 418, Go TV 45, and ACTV 510. Don't go away. All right, the question just before we went on that short break was for a Bristol. Uh, mm. the, the issue of political thuggery and armed proliferation in the Niger Delta region, is that also compounding the issue of militancy in the region? The government must be held responsible. The government must be held responsible because if the government had uh, uh, ensured that uh, there is internal democracy, we look at the struggle for power. Even people that do not have the competence, that have not managed themselves very well, today we see them managing government, participating in governance. That is why they do not have respect for the rule of law. If they had allowed competent hands, and if they had allowed internal democracy, so that uh, the, the outcome of the, uh, the election determines who lead our country, you see that we will also get the right persons that will lead our country. But for now, we see miscreants because of God's father regime, everybody tends to use whatever means to clinch to power because they know that being in power is the easiest means to make money. When we do not also have electoral offenders, as if we do not punch electoral offenders, so people could go any, to any length. You see our judiciary, you also see the tribunal, the act of the tribunal, different courts giving different judgments, all those things. All these things contributed to the crisis we have, proliferation of arms in Niger Delta. People now start recruiting thugs because when you have thugs within your control, you know that you are now being seen as a stakeholder. You can be negotiated with by the multinationals, you can also be negotiated with by the government. These are issues that we must address. So that educated minds, enlightened minds, they say a sample, a sample represents the book. So that when we have this good sample, it will also change the perception of our people. And they will now know that for you to be in governance, you must, you must have something to offer. Like uh, uh, the agitation in Niger Delta today, it is due to this uh, 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 establishment of different talk, talk groups, different militia groups that they use the uh, 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 taking over governments to forcefully lead the people. And now, after recruiting these boys, there's a limit to their control. Now they've outgrown their masters. Now they've digressed from toggery to other forms of agitation. Though we have two Niger Delta sons, we have genuine Niger Delta sons that out of frustration that took up arms, when they engaged in government, trying to see how the government could give them an attention for them to discuss the challenges we face. Have a murdered uh, Kensa Weaver and other freedom fighters, people that took up non-violent struggle, were killed, and even our youth were also forcefully killed. Out of frustration, some youth took up arms. Ijoi Council was also at the forefront of this agitation, not until the government now uh, decided to give us attention and the amnesty was introduced. 
Today, the amnesty program, people see the amnesty program as uh, one of the achievements of the government. Okay, but um, uh, opinion, Bristol, opinion, like there are Bristol, just hold on there. Um, as usual, we'd like to give further background to uh, the issues we're discussing, and Busolami will take it over from here. All right, so uh, let's just start by telling you that the Niger Delta region uh, covers um, about uh, 70,000 kilometers of uh, a land mass uh, which makes up about a 7.5 percent just run about eight percent of nigeria's land mass the region consists of bayelsa delta rivers abia Akwaibom, cross river edo imu and ondo state and it is strategic to nigeria's socio-economic development because of the abundance of crude in the region and don't forget that particular part of the world is the largest wetland on the african continent so uh, despite the obvious wealth surrounding the region it is still largely underdeveloped due to the degradation of the environment by oil exploration activities the movement for the survival of the Ogoni people, Mosop, founded by the late Ken Sarawiwa in 1990, brought to the fore the level of environmental issues faced by the indigenous people. Here you have the picture of Ken Sarawiwa. That group was led by him. All right. And uh, then came the movement for the emancipation of the Niger Delta men that happened in 2000. Uh, that group came up in 2004. It is one of the largest militant groups in the Niger Delta. The organization claims to expose exploitation and oppression of the people of the Niger Delta and devastation of the natural environment by public-private partnerships between the federal government of Nigeria and the corporations involved in the production of oil in the Niger Delta. Our guest in the studio, Mr. Joseph Eber, can't have enough of that, saying uh, the Shell mentioned a couple of, 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 of uh, international groups that we have there in the Niger Delta region and what they are not doing to help uh, alleviate the suffering of the people there so most recently the Niger Delta Avengers mm, the NDA this group came up with a new a, a, a new perspective to, to the whole to the whole agitation now they are they have presence on the, uh, the social media they came up with a Twitter handle the Twitter page even where that was taken off they came back again and that existence they, they came into existence in March 2016 the NDA has attacked oil facilities causing the shutdown of oil terminals and a fall in Nigeria's oil production to its lowest level in 20 years so are the issues seeking address what are the issues that, that are begging for attention in the Niger Delta area one environmental degradation of the region due to oil exploration activities compensation of the ravaged communities resource control uh, Bristol was, was just talking about uh, the people of the Niger Delta not given the opportunity to express themselves having the largest resource in the part of the divide and of course don't forget that of uh, development so the region can compete with major cities in the country in an attempt to solve the problems facing the region the federal government created the niger delta development commission ndc in 2000 uh, that was done by former president and don't forget let's quote her joseph ever here he says some of those interventions are cosmetic indeed with the sole mandate, the NDDs came up with the sole mandate of developing the oil-rich Niger Delta region of southern Nigeria. In September 2008, former president, late president, uh, um, Musa Yaradua, announced the formation of uh, Niger Delta Ministry with the Niger Delta Development Commission to become a parastatal under the ministry. Now, the ministry was created to coordinate efforts to tackle the challenges of infrastructure, and development, environment protection, and youth empowerment in the Niger Delta. Criticisms have, however, been trailing the activities of these parasitals and what they have been doing with the allocations they receive from the federal government. Now, let's look at the NDDC in the last four years. So, in 2013, the commission received uh, uh, three... 315 billion naira that's it there in 2014 322 billion naira you can see there's a sharp rise a spark really a very a sharp one but in 2015 there was a deep a bit to 299 billion naira and of course that has to do with the uh, the, the deep in the oil price where Nigeria can no longer make how much it used to make in the market. Okay, but how has the Niger Delta benefited from this, Mr. Eva? 
Take a look at this. Can we go back to, to, the, to the former slide? Let's see what we had before the money given to uh, the NDDC, where you have about 322 in 2013. 2013 and you have uh, 2000, in 2014 uh, a very uh, sharp rise. Let's even, if we stay on 2000 and th between 2013 and 2014, the, 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 the differentials is really, really high. What do you think happened to the money? The money, the government know the detail of what happened to the money. So we expect even the government to tell us what happened to the money because we will not behave like what led to the killing of uh, Kensarua, in which some leaders felt that uh, Niger Delta leaders betrayed the Ogoni people, and they went and killed some other people. Then government came, returned and killed Kensarua and others. The government have a lot of structures, like even EFCC, to check people who are not spending the money the way the money should be spent. For example, I expected you to bring uh, Chevron to this your table. Can we, for, just and, for clarification, yes. which government are we talking about? Is it the federal government? We are talking about the federal government. When you release money, if you release money to your wife in the house, that this money is for domestic use, this and that, you should be able to ask your wife, and what alpha? What is the situation? It is not for the children to go and ask their mother, well, how do you spend the money? It is the father that we ask. So if the federal government release money to people, the federal government will ask the people that they release the money to that. How did we, how did you spend the money? Okay, let's, so let's bring in... Uh, in order not to cause confusion in the house. Indeed, let's bring in um, uh, Bristol here. So Bristol, you have seen the breakdown and uh, the billions and billions of Naira that's been spent so far. It is only in 2015 because of Nigeria's uh, financial uh, dire straits, uh, you know, that the money has gone down 299 billion. That's still something. So what exactly, how would you respond to this large sums of money that's been you know, invested in the Niger Delta and yet we have the situation on our hands? Well, I, I know that uh, even those agencies, those agencies were created by government and by design, to my own perception, because of the operational system, is as if they were... They were, they were established to fail. Because one, the government that has established this agency, how were they appointed? They are appointed across political lines. And they are there to do the dictates of their political parties. We see these agencies funding political elections. And also, we, we're, not, we're not trickling it down to, 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 to the budgeting system. Before this, the NDC budget is being approved, I want to let you know that part of the challenges, the, the management they've had is that you must, you must, the, the committee, the committee that will approve this budget, there is corruption in the system at the legislative level, at the federal legislative level, that you must let them know the contracts you, you will send back to them as a kickback. If you do not give to them their own chunk of contract, they will never approve your budget. These are the bottlenecks. We have political influence on on on, uh, on on the leadership of these boards. We also do know that we have a dream to me a time. We have a comprehensive Niger Delta development plan, a master plan. I thought that that master plan, even both the government, the local government, NDDC, other intervention agencies, should have synchronized their developmental efforts in line with that master plan that captured those those important areas. That if 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 they had uh, uh, followed this master plan since when that document was presented to the public, by now by now it have gone a long way. So the government, uh, just as I, my elder said, the government must be held responsible. The government they have other agencies that should check these people. Now, if you go to uh, 1958, when they went to the uh, uh, the, the Lancaster House, the, the River Chiefs and Elders. Since then till this time, nothing has been done. We're still talking about underdevelopment. And that is why this generation, Frank Fanon said, every generation shall out of relative obscurity discover their mission. It's either they defend it or they betray it. So this generation, we have decided that we must hold people accountable. Even this government, we must start within. But the government must also, as of much of urgency, be assertive. The government must have the political will. We also talk about uh, uh, 
the body language of the government and the perception of the people. There is this perception from this region that the Niger Delta people, because of the we bear the economic burden, that the Nigerian state has not treated us fairly. All right. When we well, talk about well, participation in the economic activities in this region, how many Niger Delta people own oil block? And we must develop ourselves in line with our culture, our tradition, and also the peculiarities of our environment. Mm. But today, we have been, it has been so designed that we don't have any stake. We, that's why we're agitation for okay, the structuring uh, Bristol, of this country. Bristol, let me come in here that. very quickly. Uh, yes, these, uh, if, if you say government has failed in the past, um, uh, Comrade Joseph Eva, yes. this government looks like it really is ready to make a change. And let's, Ogoni, let's, yes, let's look let, at the Ogoni yeah. cleanup yeah. that it's, you know, uh, uh, going. It, it has already started. The UNEP report is going to be implemented. And is the, it federal not a government, good place, the federal government has said the start? budget that we have now, mm -hmm. there's monitoring mechanism put in place for implementation of projects. Okay. Mm -hmm. So do you think that will help add that to what And in addition to, Ibe Kachuku has said that, you know, this government is going to give, uh, you know, uh, oil, oil blocks to yeah. Niger Deltans. Well, we want to see that. We will not be clapping now while we start, although we clap and for the government because of the uh, we're going to clean up mm -hmm. because that alone uh, shows clearly. In fact, from the inaugural speech of the president, of President Buhari, you see clearly that this government means well for the Niger Delta. But we were surprised when the budget for amnesty was, was cut to 20 billion, from 60 billion to 20 billion. Mm -hmm. These are the bad advisors. In every government, people we go and tell the government people, don't do this. If you are doing this, this and that. Let the president do things out from his own heart. But do you know from that the, the Because the president has... accepted the Ministry of Niger Delta to retain it. Mm. We never believe it. I'm mm. telling you honestly. Mm. No Niger Delta person believe that President Buhari will retain the Ministry of Niger Delta. But he retained the Ministry of Niger Delta. But do you know that the, the budget Nigeria is running today is, is, is on deficit? As mm -hmm. it is, the deficit that Nigeria has as at the first quarter of this year is about uh, 725 No, we will not believe all the deficit story. All this defi sto deficit story, this and that. Don't believe them. That's a reality. No, no there's no reality. Because they, they collected a basha loot. Where is the basha loot? Where is the Abasha loot? Let the government tell us the figure. Abasha loot is this amount of money. And Abasha loot is in this account. People are not telling us that deficit, deficit, how your price is going down, how your price is going down. Where is Abasha? Abasha Lute alone is supposed to take care of Nigeria for the next 10 years. Are you saying, Where is the money? Are you saying, Comrade Eva, that things have not changed for the worse financially, economically for Nigeria, and it should not reflect in the budget? Look, my, my, leader, know, for, for, my leader, Femi Falano, my, my leader, Femi Falano, Barista Femi Falano, mm. senior advocate, he told President Buhari that you don't need to go and borrow money. There are banks that this government borrowed money, give money, called bailout. During the Yaradua Jonathan era, mm. banks were giving bailout. Go and let the banks return that money. You can use that money to fund this budget. Mm. Why? Why are we? Why, why? Where is the money that the, this federal, go the federal government of Jonathan and the Yaradua gave to banks? Where is the money? Falano is asking for that money. Let the banks repay that money. Use the money. Don't go to World Bank or anywhere. This is the problem. So I want the president to know that any fake advisor or bad advisor that advise him, when it is time for him to leave office, they will not call those bad advisors. So it is him that they will call that your government is this, your government is that. So he should not listen to people. For example, look at the case of uh, Satan Ijo election. Mm -hmm. I was going from media house to media house, television house to television house, to ask the security people, where are these arms coming from? Indeed, a very good question there that uh, we still so don't have I want you to, to bring Inspector General of Police to my seat here. Bring Inspector General of Police Arasa to this seat and ask Arasa. Ar uh, Arasa, you are the IG. Where are the suspects that destroy Southern Ijo election that a whole nation like Nigeria election was going on for three times within a, a local government? All right, we will, we will definitely ask him. Uh, Comrade Joseph Eva. Bring him here. Thank you so much. We will. That, bring him on here. Yeah. IG. Axi, yes. we are the suspects. Yes, we can and Saturday we will. Ijo. All right, uh, Bristol Alagbaria, Ijo Youth Council uh, Coordinator there in Port Harcourt, want to say thank you very much Indeed. Uh, for your time. And uh, of course, we will revisit these issues in the nearest future. Hopefully, it will be uh, for the better. Well, 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 uh, uh, there is also another point to read to our very leaders good. too, our leaders too, because uh, part of the problem we have faced in Niger Delta those people that profess to lead us to, 
they've also been instrumental to the crisis we have in this region. Some of them, under the cloak of representing the people, they've amassed so much wealth, even when they shout and they get attention. It's of them to place the issues on the table. They now place their personal issues. And that is why it has lingered over this time. It is not as if the government has not been engaging the people. The government has been engaging the people. But most of our leaders in this region, they have not led us well. Our father did not led us well. And today, okay, our your point is numbers. very well taken. Today, uh, Bristol and Lagbaria, Ijo Youth Council and Comrade Joseph Eva. I want to thank you gentlemen again uh, for your time and your passionate input. Of course,